Thursday, Australia on show. National parks to the Great Murray. A very reasonable holiday. The reef to the outback. Sharks on display and tempting crocodiles. Scary animals. Getaway's favourite Aussie escapes. Thursday night on Win. Saturday, a magical movie premiere for the whole family. And I will love you more than life itself. Featuring Kate Winslet as the fairy princess. How do you know my name? Fairies, Saturday on Win. Charges laid after a cross-border truck chase. Drought worsens across the downs. And schools targeted for break-ins. This is the Toowoomba Win Local News with Des McWilliam and Selena Downs. Good evening. Good evening. Warwick detectives have charged a 43-year-old man following a dangerous chase with police from New South Wales. It's alleged the man attacked the truck's owner at Armadale, stealing his rig. Police unable to stop him at the state border. A rude awakening for Warwick residents this morning. A massive clean-up required after a semi-trailer allegedly stolen in New South Wales around midnight carved a path of destruction through the township. The driver accused of travelling on the wrong side of the road, knocking down signs and traffic lights, even hitting another vehicle. At the same time losing the sides off the trailer, the top of the Pantac torn off as the rig failed to negotiate a bridge. Its load spread across a six-kilometre area of the town. And he's gone from... Uh... Uh, well, really from the hospital, the base hospital, right through East Warwick uh, and uh, back around uh, the Kalani Road and then through the town and exit it uh, on the highway towards Brisbane. And he's uh, done a substantial amount of damage on the way through. Damage estimated in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Amazingly, no one was injured during the pursuit, which started near Tamworth, Queensland police assisting after the semi crossed the border. They claim the suspect drove erratically on a number of occasions, the result most evident in Warwick. Our uh, motive was to uh, try to uh, encourage negotiations with the driver of the truck and uh, we didn't activate sirens. We merely uh, escorted the vehicle and attempted to uh, ensure that no member of the public was uh, actually uh, coming collision with the vehicle. The driver finally abandoned the rig at Gladfield south of Cunningham's Gap, fleeing into bushland and onto a property where detectives made their arrest. A 43-year-old New South Wales man charged with the dangerous operation of a motor vehicle, willful damage and other traffic offences, appearing before the Warwick Magistrates Court later this week. Christina Harrison, Win News. The number of drought-declared properties in southern Queensland has increased by 20% as crippling dry conditions continue to plague the region. Grain growers predicting their current harvest volumes will be less than half of last season's. It's been a long dry winter and as temperatures start to climb, the sting of the drought is worsening for farmers. It's a bleak picture across southern Queensland's cropping lands. Well, particularly uh, wheat, barley and chickpeas. But the longer it stays dry, then uh, the bigger the impact's going to be on the, the coming summer crop. Grainco predicting the current harvest will be down 50% on last season's. Farmers forced to take drastic action to fight the drought. It's bringing harvest forward at the moment. Uh, you know, in southern Queensland, all well, these crops turning at the moment that are uh, you know, probably weeks ahead of schedule. Queensland's housing 130 individually drought-declared properties, most of those in the southern part of the state. But even that doesn't paint a true picture. A drought declaration is only effective for beef and dairy producers, the government assisting in the transport costs of fodder, water and adjustment. Most grain growers haven't bothered applying to be drought-declared, and some are now contemplating their futures. There's a lot of people that, uh, that talk to me regularly that are saying that... Uh, or are questioning what they're going to do. They, they can't see a future. Lisa Honeywell, Win News. Police are urging residents to be on the lookout for youths loitering around Darling Down schools during the spring break. Two break-ins already reported in Toowoomba this week. Toowoomba's Harristown Preschool is the most recent break-in target. Three buildings entered sometime overnight. Thieves jemmying open doors, damaging the locks. St Anthony's Primary School Administration block also hit this week. 
Police say while little might be stolen, the damage bill can be costly, running into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. A rise in such offences expected over the school holidays. There's not many staff at the school grounds, so you've got people walking around or travelling through the school grounds. So, um, and that traditionally, this is when um, some of we have a bit of an increase of some of the offences like break and enters, willful damages, uh, graffitis. Vandals also broke into the Harristown Primary School back in June, causing thousands of dollars damage, breaking glass, spilling paint and destroying expensive computer equipment. Encourage people that live near schools or are travelling past and see someone acting suspiciously or hanging around the grounds to give the police at the Toowoomba station a ring and uh, just report the matter. The state government has promised Queensland schools more than $2 million to upgrade security, initially concentrating on schools in high-risk areas where there's a history of vandalism and break-ins. Christina Harrison, Win News. The Toowoomba City Council nursery could have a new home if the quarry gardens come to fruition. Councillors have been inspecting the nursery this week, discussing options on relocation. Councillor Jim Park says the old quarry site would be a perfect spot for the nursery if the proposed international gardens go ahead. The opposition has committed to give the land to council if successful in the next election. The gardens expected to bring outstanding tourism opportunities to Toowoomba. Telstra is set to cut as many as 4,000 jobs over the next three years, but country Australia will benefit. A leading financial newspaper says it's obtained documents which show Telstra plans to rationalise its 220 call centres, moving many of them from the city to country areas. As Telstra shares continue to ride the roller coaster on the ASX, more news that the carrier is committed to saving on its expenses. Today's edition of the national newspaper, The Financial Review, says it has documents which show the national carrier intends to cut its 220 call centres, relocating them to country Australia. The word has quickly spread to regional authorities. They even know who will go first. I believe Melbourne's going to be the first uh, Telstra call centre to, uh, to, uh, to close. Mr Large says his city, like many throughout regional Australia, offers much in the way of cost savings to larger corporations wishing to establish call centres. Real estate and labour is significantly cheaper and less transient. There are a number of reasons for this, including um, cost of uh, uh, property, uh, real estate, uh, but one of the main things is the high turnover of personnel that you find in capital cities. The documents show Telstra intends to take three years to complete its regional call centre downsizing. Because of the political sensitivity of the move, the $412 million program will be conducted with the consultation of the federal government. Alistair Frew, Win News. Stay watching Win Local News coming up after the break. John Young heads Bush. And Queen's Park takes on a carnival atmosphere. Jack Thompson. I'm getting married. And Jacqueline McKenzie. While we're all here, there's something I want to say. In a celebration of true love and enduring friendships. Cheers! Under the Lighthouse Dancing premieres tonight, 9.40 on Win. For the biggest range and best prices on air conditioners. Buy now with no deposit, no interest, and nothing to pay for 12 months. That's right, no interest and nothing to pay for one full year. Hurry in for an LG room air conditioner, $599. Save $200 on an Electra 2.5 horsepower reverse cycle air conditioner, $999. Fujitsu 2.5 horsepower reverse cycle split system, $2199. And cool and heat the largest of areas with an Electra split system, $2999. Beat the heat and save heaps this summer at Harvey Norman, your air conditioning specialist. Limited time only, see store for details. Toowoomba, get ready for the modified production and Empire action this Saturday night at Charlton Raceway. Plus the motorbike expression session with Extreme Games athlete Troy Carroll and Anthony Lambert. Speedway racing this Saturday night, proudly sponsored by Auto Pro and Linear Graphics at Charlton Speedway. Look at the savings here, here, here and here. Savings galore. It's Franklin's Fresh and Big Fresh bonus pack sale. Two litre Schweppes Cola, two for the price of one. Yes, two dollars for two. Pork barbecue chops, $3.98 a kilo. Middle bacon rashers, $6.98 a kilo. And four kilo bags of pre-packed brushed potatoes, $3.98 a bag. Savings galore during the bonus pack sale at Franklin's Fresh and Big Fresh. Grocery specials also available at No Frills Village Fair. Win Television proudly supports Norma O'Hara Murphy. Australia's top singer-songwriter and golden guitar winner is coming to your town. I was driving down a highway on a moonlit summer night. Singing all those wonderful award-winning songs just for you. Will soothe my soul. Bring me Book your table now. Don't miss 
witness this wonderful artist live in concert on her final farewell tour. Where will I meet you? Where will I meet you? The Coffee Club or the Coffee Club Cafe Bar Restaurant. Where will I meet you? You're watching Win Local News. Small businesses are a risky investment. In fact, 85% fail altogether. But a group of Toowoomba graduates are following their dreams. Today, taking their first steps into the world of self-employment. I didn't expect it. Oh my God, I tell you what, I'm wrapped in it. I haven't been so excited for years. This echoed the sentiments of most this morning, graduating after weeks of intense training in the new Enterprise Initiative Scheme, or NICE. 22 new local businesses now functioning in the region as a result of today's graduates. But it doesn't happen overnight. Participants need to have a polished business concept before they're accepted into the program. They have to put the proposal to us and then we, work, we measure the viability of the business idea and, and really look at whether it's going to, has the potential to succeed. And that's just what Adrian Smith has done, using his 20 year love for woodwork to get him off the unemployment cycle. I do French polishing, furniture restoration, wood turning, gull gilding, whatever people want done. Tracy Shorten's new magnetic therapy business developing from personal experience. My husband actually had a car accident a long time ago and went through a lot of pain uh, and different, different treatments to try and fix it up and nothing helped except for magnetic therapy. And despite statistics, these graduates aren't looking back, excited about what the future holds. It's hard work. <laughs> um, it was easy to go home at 5 o'clock, stick your feet up and worry about it at 8.30 tomorrow morning. But I think it's so rewarding. They go into the office and start working. But when you come out, you feel good. You know, and, and you look at the bank balance and you go, yeah, you know, I've created that. Lisa Chalk, Win News. A Lockyer Valley fireworks company has cemented its place amongst the world's best. KC's, which manufactures its product at Helladen, has outshone the likes of Germany and Japan to be in front after the first round of the Asian Fireworks Championships. With thousands of staff and massive budgets, Germany and Japan are widely recognised as the leaders in fireworks displays, or at least they used to be. Last Saturday, a small Queensland company, KC Fireworks, taught them all a thing or two, scoring two perfect tens for their display at the International Fireworks titles in Macau, giving KC's the outright lead after the first round. Operator Clive Featherby returned briefly to Australia this week, preparing for the deciding round later this month. It was rather scary. They had the Philippines on before us, and I watched that show, and I thought, oh, so we're going to get thrashed here, you know, like, and um, they only polled, and uh, seven was the highest they polled. And... The odds were certainly against them, with the Chinese army confiscating their shells until the day before the show, and a typhoon threatening offshore. Regardless, Clive and his team managed the highest ever opening night score in the competition's 12-year history. We went for a lot of variety. Um, we went for a lot of the ground effect type fireworks as well as the big aerial ones. The Japanese didn't use any of that type of stuff whatsoever. Just relied on their past traditions and the fact they make very nice shells and all that. So um, we were completely different to everybody else. While larger Australian firms have concentrated on the Olympics, KC's performance in Macau could secure them a very lucrative future. We've since been asked to go and do contests all over the world. Even that one night we got asked to go and do Canada, Thailand and the United States. Max Futcher, Win News. Queen's Park is undergoing a major transformation in readiness for this weekend's Carnival of Flowers. Today, flower show entrants were undertaking the huge task of filling a giant marquee, measuring 66 metres in length. It was organised chaos in the giant tent today as those involved in the flower show went about their business. But with the help of more than 150 volunteers, the new flower show venue is taking shape. Well, I think it's going very well at the moment. Um, we've got nearly all the props in place and the flowers have arrived and the designers are here. So I think it's all go. Outside, there's similar scenes as show operators busily erected their rides ahead of weekend festivities. Uh, it's looking good. We're, uh, we're looking at really filling the park with family activities this year. So we'll have children's activities, a lot more concerts, a lot more entertainment. While hundreds of people have toiled over their entries for this year's carnival, spare a thought for the 24 council gardeners, who've pushed their green thumbs to the limit, planting more than 310,000 seedlings. 
Today a few of the gardening gurus offered up their expertise, a flower bed in Myers providing the ideal setting, answering all questions related to flora. What time we put them in, uh, how we get them all to bloom at the same time, just uh, what fertilisers we use. But surely when dealing with the public they must get the odd silly question. Not yet, we haven't, no. <laughs> but I'm sure we will. And it didn't take long. Well, I've been looking around everywhere to try and buy some privet. Where do I find that? Privet? <laughs> uh, we don't sell it. Tom Forbes, Win News. Tonight our wildlife expert John Young takes a look at the cannibal of the bird world. The square-tailed kite's diet consists almost exclusively of baby birds. Good day. Welcome to Win News Wildlife. Tonight I'm going to take you 75 feet up a very shaky poplar gum into a shaky hide as well where we spy on the private life of the square-tailed kite. Every now and again, filming wildlife can stretch the nerves to the limit. Filming a breeding pair of square-tailed kites was just such an occasion. The nest was high in a rotten poplar gum, and because I couldn't get high enough, a tower had to be pulled up and erected on top of a tree. What an ordeal. This was great to film the behaviour of the kite throng, but when the wind blew and rocked the treetops, well, all I could do was sit still, hang on, and hope it didn't get too strong. However, the tameness of the kites and the total disinterest in their new neighbours, humans, meant that I would get some great shots and behaviour. As you can see here, I eventually removed the covering from the hide and had an unimpeded view from their comings and goings from only four metres away. The male would turn up two or three times a day with small birds plucked from their nest, a behavioural trait of this species. Square-tailed kites occur over much of Australia but are not common anywhere. If they were, young chicks would certainly be reduced in numbers as they feed almost exclusively on small chicks. Next Wednesday night, we're going to take a look at a very special program, Program 2 on the Red Goshawk, as the two chicks get their first feed. So till then, remember, look after our wildlife. It's a natural thing to do. Catch you next Wednesday night for a very special program indeed. Look forward to it. Thanks, John. To Sharewatch now and some slight changes on the market today. APN News and Media rose 5 to 4.95. WMC lowered 17 to 7.83. Westpac closed too stronger at the end of trade. Both your Lords and Gold are up 18 and 6 respectively. Sport now and hapless draws in the hockey pad. That's right, Selena. Coming up, our men's and women's team sharing honours at the Olympics and record nominations for this year's Toowoomba City Golf Pro-Am. On a current affair, the Queensland doctor banned for using alternative medicine. He claims they treat even cure diseases. Diabetes, the tumours with the, the cancers. But authorities say he's offering false hope. What a great looking car. It's the all new Corolla Ascent and is available in five door liftback and four door sedan. And it's packed with features. Standard features include a gutsy 1.8 litre twin cam engine, factory fitted air conditioning, driver's side airbag, power steering and four speaker stereo. All this for just $18,990 plus on rides. The all new Corolla Ascent, now at Butler's Toyo, Ruthven Street, Toowoomba. There's been a lot said about various paint brands of late, but I paint for a living. And for outside jobs, you can't go past Solva Duragard. It's tough and it's durable. I reckon it's the best paint under the sun. And Solva Duragard comes in a full range of fashion and heritage colours. From Mediterranean to Old Queenslander, there's a Solva colour scheme to suit your home. And right now, you'll get expert service and advice, as well as great prices on all Solva products. BMS might attend three big locations in Toowoomba. Silly Sally, big brand supermarket specials, pack of four golden circle fruit bites, 175, pack of 24 hundred shape, 495, and praise fat free dressing 180. Don't miss them, the fat free dressing 180. The Arnott's pack of 24 shape, 495, and pack of four golden circle fruit bites, 175. If you're over 55 and no longer working full-time and want car insurance with a lifetime guarantee on all repairs... At last someone understands. Call Australian Pensioners Insurance Agency now on 132 555. Thursday, Australia on show. National parks to the Great Murray. A very reasonable holiday. The reef to the outback. Sharks on display and tempting crocodiles. Scary animals. Getaway's favourite Aussie escapes. Thursday night on Win. Welcome back to Win Sport. Our men's and women's Olympic hockey stars are hoping to capture full points after sharing the spoils in yesterday's encounters. For a full wrap-up of how our Toowoomba athletes are faring, we cross to Benny Pike in Sydney. 
The Hockey Roos face a tough ask in tonight's match against Group A frontrunners Argentina, who are undefeated and two points clear. Coach Rick Charlesworth shrugged off his charges mistake riddled one all draw in Spain. He said the game was all defence and didn't show off the Aussies' domination in attack. He also singled out debutante Angie Skirving and gave her a big rap. Michael Brennan will line up tomorrow Arvo when the Cookabucks take on Spain. Both the men's and women's teams have one win, one draw record. Synchronised swimming hopeful Danielle Leish begins her Olympic campaign next week, but will be hoping some of the Aussie gold luster will hang around for her competition. Lightweight boxer Michael Katsidis is fine-tuning his next bout on Friday against Kazakhstan fighter Nortan Karmezdanov. In Sydney for Win News, I'm Benny Pike. As our Australian athletes are gearing up for the start of track and field events at the Sydney Olympics, local runners are preparing for the annual Fair Home Gift. With a total prize pool of $4,000, the Toowoomba feature is considered Queensland's richest foot race. On October 7, there's guaranteed to be a great deal of talent showcased in the 70 metre event. Last year's winner, Stacey Derima, back to defend the title. And nationally ranked competitors, Daryl Walson and Gavin Hunter, should... Locals are certainly putting in the extra hours of training on the redeveloped city course and they'll be hoping the acquired knowledge of greens and fairways may give them the edge in this weekend's Pro-Am. Though a quick glance over the 80 professionals contesting the $10,000 feature sees a duo of accomplished exponents as the early favourites. Terry Price, a former Queensland PGA winner, while Peter McWinney continues his climb back from a horrific injury. I'm sure you recall his story uh, earlier in the year when it was thought Peter's career was over, crushed between two motor vehicles prior to the Australian Masters, but Mac is back and he, he's looking great and he is one of the most popular golfers on the circuit. Another Sunshine Coast competitor in Marcus Kane broke through recently for his maiden win on the Australian Tour with victory in the ANZ Championship. He'll be another laying strong claims, along with Scott Wern, Adam Crawford and Carl Smedling, but local knowledge of City's bent fairways could see one of these blokes claim the title. Of course our local guys, we've got Chris and Matt Britnell, uh, Johnny Price is with us, also um, Jade McClymans and Jade and Matt actually uh, grabbed the major share of the money last year. Britnell goes into his title defence full of confidence after a fairly consistent season on the Troppo Tour. I had a win at uh, Redland Bay earlier in the year, uh, equaled the course record there with a 66. Um, also had uh, a couple of seconds around the place, uh, that was around Rockhampton and uh, and uh, you've been. The par 418 should provide a major focus for spectators with a $250 approach shot bonus on offer to the professionals. John Carsberg, Win News. That's it for our sport tonight. Back to you, Des. Thanks a lot, Pat. We'll stay with us. The weather's coming up after the break and then gardening tips with Brian Sam. Then, quite appropriately, some Olympic art. The outrageous Trigger Happy TV coming soon to win. Want to play ball and change your life forever? This Thursday, Powerball jackpots to an unbelievable $12 million. So try your hand this Thursday with Powerball. One ball could change it all for you. Sports car at Peter Roberts Honda, 642 Ruthven Street, Toowoomba. The modern way to pay for all your computing needs is to flexi rent them from Harvey Norman. Flexi rent computers, printers, and software for your home or business. You can flexi rent the latest Hewlett Packard computer and a Color Desk Jet printer from just $19.38 a week. With flexi rent, you can always stay up to date because flexi renting allows you to trade up as technology changes. Flexi rent and get the solution you really need. Credit conditions apply. See your tax advisor about tax deductibility. Where will I meet you? Where will I meet you? The Coffee Club or the Coffee Club Cafe Bar Restaurant. Where will I meet you? Coffee Club. With Easy Access.
access. Fast connection and the latest technology. 24-hour day backup support seven days a week. And backed by the world's leading IP network. WinNet is the internet service provider that gives you the world. The world. Call 1-300-139-949 and get online with WinNet. It's a big world. Buckle up for the ride of a lifetime. Awesome! Three teams, countless options, winner takes all. Excellent. There the we go. Great Chase coming soon to win. Good evening. Welcome again to our Olympic Edition statewide weather forecast. At around Queensland, the sun continues to shine in most parts. Last night, the temperatures remained fairly warm throughout. The coolest minimums were recorded in Toowoomba and Gympie, recording 11 degrees. Rockhampton fell to 12. Much more humid in the north. Cairns didn't drop below 20 degrees. And the state's top today was 30 in Warwick and Gympie. Cairns and Townsville each climbed to 28 degrees. Surprisingly, Toowoomba had the same. Bundaberg had 26. Maroochydore was a lot cooler, just 23 degrees. Checking out the satellite now and we can see patches of cloud cover in the northern parts of the state, clear condition for other parts. Around the country a cloud band is sitting over the western areas with patchy coverage in South Australia. To the chart and the weather patterns are remaining fairly steady at the moment with fine conditions to continue over Queensland for the rest of the week. High over the Tasman re remaining fresh southeast winds on the tropical coast with a few coastal showers about. Looking at tomorrow's forecast now, and apart from the northern parts of the state, it's looking fairly promising. Cloud and isolated showers for the tropics, fine weather further inland, moderate to fresh southeast to easterly winds. For the Herbert and Lower Burdigan, only isolated coastal showers about, fine elsewhere with moderate southeast to northeast winds, becoming fresh at times. In central Queensland, much better weather, the Bureau saying fine apart from some shallow fog patches, like moderate east to northeast winds. In the Downs, fairly warm and hot days for you guys with smoke haze in parts, light to moderate northwest to northeast winds. For the Wide Bay and Burnett, fine and hazy with local early morning fog, light to moderate north to northeast winds with a high fire danger remaining. Much the same on the Sunshine Coast with early fog and warm days. Light to moderate northwest winds with fresh northeast sea breezes developing. And the Olympic City continues to put on the good weather for our visitors, mostly sunny again for tomorrow with a top of 23 degrees. And I'll be back with you tomorrow night for another state forecast. Thanks a lot, Kesha. Well, now it's time for our weekly gardening tips. Tonight, Brian Sams is at the Toowoomba City Golf Club, where in just a few minutes, the awards will begin for this year's Champion Carnival Gardens. Brian, what's going on down there? Thanks, Des. As you can see, people have been busy all afternoon organising all the trophies for tonight's carnival presentation, and there certainly is lots of trophies to be given away. This afternoon, I went out to Mount Kynock and had a look at a wonderful new garden. Anyone who's been on the road to Highfields lately will have noticed a wonderful new garden being designed and being put in. I'm joined by the garden's owner, Lee Houston. Lee, can you tell me a little bit about how you went about designing this garden? Well, we wanted to get a, a, a park-like effect and we knew it was beyond our scope. So we asked for a plan and we went to uh, Gar Gar Gardenscapes, um, who, Jeff and Michelle, who designed it, and uh, obtained the trees from Brinda Bella and also had uh, High Highfields Garden Centre do all the hard work for us. Now, I know that you've got a pond down here. Can you tell me, is it sealed? It is. We have a liner in it. Now, a lot of people must be thinking, you must be mad to put in plants with these really dry conditions. How are you keeping the moisture in? I'm using a polypipe uh, watering system with uh, drippers off it and it seems to be helping. Now, I notice that you've got a really thick layer of mulch. Which mulch are you using? I'm using a mix of uh, bark mulch and forest mulch and that's working very well. Um, how long do you reckon before this garden is going to be absolutely spectacular? Uh, I would say about five years people will be starting to stop and say what's going wow this is really something here but I, it will be in its prime in about 20 years. It's a long term plan in that 20 years time which tree do you think is going to be the absolutely the best one we'll take a picture of it now. Um, a bit hard to say Cedar of Lebanon I think is the one that's going to be the best but that will be even a longer time than, than that. We well, certainly are to be congratulated for what you've done here and I think the long term view to create the parkland setting is really worthwhile. Thank you Brian. Well that garden certainly will look fantastic in the years to come. Now the winner of the Grand Champion Trophy will be announced in just a few minutes together with all the rest of the Carnival winners for the year 2000. Now it's back to you Selena.
Thanks a lot, Brian, and we'll bring you those results on tomorrow night's news. In the meantime, while thousands of the world's peak athletes set up home at Olympic Village, the artworks of Australian children are helping to make it a friendlier place. This piece by nine-year-old Emma Kennedy from Southbrook is just one of the works greeting residents of the Olympic Village. Emma's painting depicting Kathy Freeman posing near an emu won her an award in the Share the Spirit World Art Program. Her work earning its place at the Games and on Olympic memorabilia. But for those who can't make it to Sydney, a print of the award-winning painting is currently on display at the Toowoomba Regional Art Gallery. And that's our bulletin this Wednesday night from all of us on the Win News team. Have a good night. Good night. This has been a Win News presentation from Australia's largest regional television network. Hi, thanks again for tuning in. And here at Homebush, we've seen yet another extraordinary performance from an Australian Olympian.